What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I'm Isaiah. Today, we're going to be jumping back into the Shadow Deep with the next scenario in the Burning Light campaign. We're going to be rummaging through the Herbalist shop. Now, before we do that, a couple things I'd like to say. Number one, first and foremost, big, huge shout out. Thank you to our newest Iron Level patron, Hobby Cathartic Man. Thanks for stopping by, showing some support. I appreciate the crap out of you. If you'd like to show some support through Patreon, the link to that is down below. Now, if you, that's not your cup of tea, that's fine. Maybe consider hitting the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. That way you can become, be made aware whenever I post new content, which is usually every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now, also, I'd like to take a second to let you guys know that we've, I've officially gotten the Redbubble set up for the channel. So if you'd like to order some channel merch or check out some of my other design work, there's a link to that down in the description as well. That being said... Let's go ahead and get into this game of Rangers of Shadow Deep. As you push through the broken door into the gloom of the tower, you are nearly overwhelmed by the strength and variety of scents from within. Basil, thyme, rosemary, farlight, and even a few herbs you can't identify. There is something else though, a sweet, sickly scent that runs underneath them all. Inside the dim tower, you can just make out numerous drying racks and cupboards along the walls, and a huge apothecary's table in the center, all sitting on an unpaved dirt floor. Then, in the darkness of the far corner, you spy something else. A monstrous plant, covered in oozing, sticky sap, its tentacle-like vines waving in the air. Just then, a root or vine bursts out of the ground and wraps around the leg of one of your companions. All right, folks. So we're getting into the Herbalist store. I'm playing on a slightly smaller board uh, than is recommended. This is two by two and a half instead of two and a half by two and a half, but whatever. I'm also playing the challenge level. I'm adding, I'm adding that in because why not? Uh, so we got four extra flies, one in each corner, along with all the things I randomized. I rolled a D8 for my dark vine, dark vine, whoo, dark root vine that starts at adjacent to a random character and rolled Dundrick, of course, which is fine. It's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. The inside of this tower is gloomy, so line of sight is reduced to 12 inches for the duration. My points of interest are the apothecary's table in the middle and the four cupboard slash bookshelves behind each of those dark root vines. With that being said, we're in turn one, ranger phase. So we're gonna start with Samuel, who's just going to get up out of the way. He's going to come, double move, yeah, to right there, and just chill. Uh, Dundrick is then going to use his evade to step back an inch, and then he's going to shoot. And... Do I want to do it here? Nah, we're going to hold that. Oh, we're going to use our reroll. I'm not rolling a one off gate. Yes, there we go. So I burned two of my heroic abilities. Whatever, that is a 19 plus five is a 24 over there. Armor 10 with six health. That will absolutely obliterate that dark root vine. I have one companion activation left. I'm not exactly sure what I want it to be just yet. The Tobias. I think I'm going to move him one, two, three, four, five, six to here. And we're going to take a shot at that giant fly in the corner. 14 plus Tobias's. Let's go look at the sheet. Plus three makes a 17 over the flies 12 that'll hit over armor six that'll kill all right dead fly and then we'll go to monster phase so this is where the monsters start so since the maximum line of sight is only 12 inches this was the only model that could actually see anybody so it did move towards samuel everybody else just double moved towards the target point which in this scenario is the entry point where i came into the room we'll then go to companion phase matram mason is going to move just a little bit of his movement he's going to move five and he's going to throw a dagger at that dark root pine 
Oh, Dark Root Vine is plus one, so 20. And I am plus one. So they're 19. No. Yeah, they're 19. I'm 20. So I do get through. Um, beating their armor, even with the minus one damage, that will peg that guy. Good roll. Good job, Matrim. I really didn't expect that to go that well. Uh, everybody else is just going to be shuffling around, so we'll show you where they start. And this is where we all end up. Where we stop, let's go to the deck, because it's the end of the turn. We'll draw the red ace. We'll bring a dark root vine in on us. On a three is... That'll be on Matrum. Uh, he needs to make a move test. A move roll, target number 14. Uh, that's definitely going to pass. So it goes anywhere within three inches. I'm going to place it here. That way Dundrick has a very clear shot on it going into the next round. I'm going to pick up these activation tokens right here. We're going to go turn two, Ranger Fades. All right, so Dundrick is going to go first, and he's going to use his uh, steady shot here. So plus five to the roll. 11 plus 10 is a 21 over there 10 which will do enough to slay that dark root perfect and then he's going to move his seven seven to right here start heading his way towards that apothecary table which is a point of interest so next activation is going to be samuel who's going to take a shot at that dark root vibe Oh, yes. Getting a 19 plus, plus 2, so 21. That's going to be enough to kill Vine. And then he is going to move towards that point of interest up there. So it's right here. Sigvald's going to go next. He can get to just outside of that fly, which will then force the fly will then force combat onto me. We'll see what happens there. Giant flies plus zero, and I'm plus a bunch for Sigvald because he's a monster. He's plus five, so that's a 23. And then he's plus two for a two handed weapon, so 25. That'll absolutely just squish the fly. Perfect. Going into the monster phase, this vine's going to be able to get to the dog that I found. I don't think anybody's within 12 of this guy. No, the dog is, so he'll move nine towards the dog. He can fly. Right there. Okay. Can't see anybody. He's within 12, but he can't see anybody because of the bookshelf there. So he'll move towards target point. I it doesn't say that they can do this, but I'm just playing that they can kind of go under stuff because it is, in fact, you know, a root, so they're kind of growing up. That's So I'm just kind of ignoring the terrain for them. And this fly can also not see anybody, so it will double move to there. To right there. And, of course, the, the big dark root plant doesn't have a movement. It cannot move, so it's stuck in place. Which brings me to companion phase. Tobias is going to move and take a shot at this fly. 15 plus 3 is an 18. Against an 18 will be a miss. Right, it would have been actually a 17 for me because I moved and then shot. So fail. Miss shot. Demona is going to put a fireball right there. So against the first one. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's me. I'm the green one. That's a crit for me. So that's going to absolutely wipe out the dark root. And then we'll see what it does to the fly. Nine plus three is going to miss the fly. So I'll, I'll take that. I'm, I'm okay with that. That was a pretty good fireball. I'll take it. Uh, she's then going to move. Where's she going to move? She's going to move up here with the dog to provide some support in that struggle, I think. And then I believe my friend here 
is going to approach and swing at that vine with some support. So he's got plus four on support and plus one for being right. So he's plus five to the roll. That's a, ooh, not great. So six. Nope. So that's going to be a miss for me. It's going to be a 16 for the dark root vine coming back at me on my armor 10. So I'll take six damage. There. However, however, Jules St. Augustine is going to move up and heal Matrim. So I'm going to pick five, pick five of that damage right back up. Off I still of. got dog. So why not? We're going to swing. Ooh, dog gets a 24 with his support. Um, against their 11. Yeah, get in there, dog. You ripped, you dug that vine right up out of the ground. Good job, buddy. He's a good boy. Brings us to turn to event phase, where we get a red six. So that red six gave us two giant flies by the entryway. Luckily, I was I was wrong earlier in this this campaign, this mission, because Desmond has double fireball. That's what was written on her paper. I don't know where I got the bird thing from that I did the time before, but I apologize for doing that wrong. My, that's my bad, but definitely I'll show you how I've written down. And there's not like a bunch of erases around that part. Okay, so, oh, I know. She has three spells. That's what it is. I paid to give her three spells. That's what it was. Wait, nuts. That is what it is. I paid. She's the cost 20. I got to adjust her recruitment points because, yeah, she should be 30 right now with a third spell. Because I have 145 recruitment points. Okay, we're right. We're right. Turn three, Ranger phase. Dundrick is going to take a shot at this fly. Good. And eight plus five is a 13, which will beat the fly. Has armor six and health five. That's enough to kill the fly. He's Boom. then going to move up to the apothecary's table. Coming into contact with this, a large apothecary's table, I make a perception roll. Um, there's my dice. Target number 12, so that will pass. And then I can look at note 398, so potential spoiler. So I dig through the apothecary's table. I find three XP and a treasure token. Next activation for me is going to be Samuel, who's going to take a shot. Ooh, Desdemona, stand up, girl. Who's going to take a shot at this fly right here. Getting a not enough to hit. And then he's going to continue his way over towards that point of interest. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to have Desdemona throw her second fireball right here. So against the first fly... That's a 10 plus 13 over their armor. Six will kill a fly. And against the second one, um, will not kill a fly. So you took out one of them, Desi. I'm, I'm proud of you, girl. Which will bring us to the monster phase. Um, who are you closer to? Probably Dundra. Yeah. So this fly is going to come towards Dundrick and take a swing. Um, not going to hit me with that. Dundrick is plus two to his fight. It's a 13 for me, which again, a 13 is enough to kill a fly. Good job, Dundrick. You're not really much for the hand-to-hand, -hand, but good job. down here who doesn't quite have the movement to get to me in one go because I'm not going to force combat on him. So he'll double move to Jules. And then we'll go to my companion phase where Dog is going to come to here and swing it fly with plus two. Ooh, Dog does not do so well there. Uh, let me check his stats. That will deal four damage to Dog. Double move Sigvald down here. Just to really put the thing to bed. We're going to move Matrim over here. And Matrim's going to take a swing. Matrim with plus six, seven. Yes, he's going to beat it. And that will kill. Also, I have to go back. Hold on. I got to make a check on the dog for disease. I'm to make a health roll there. 
plus two, so I will fail the health throw, so dog will be diseased. Leaving Tobias. He's going to double move this away. Which will bring us to the event phase. We get the red two. So we make a random roll. We get another dark root. So a dark root a explodes from the floor next to Dundrick. Again, I rolled a one for my randomization, and I just go in order of my character sheets. So, movement test. Two plus, even with his movement of seven, will not pass, so it will place in contact with him. I can place it anywhere, though. So, I'm going to place it here. Because I'm going to try to be a clever boy. Um, and then we'll go to turn four. All right, that was the right call. So, we're just going to move here not swing and then Sigvald's gonna come in and swing big um, four plus five for base makes nine plus four more for the support makes 13 which will beat the dark root vine but will not kill it it will only deal three damage to it Correction. it will deal five damage Four, nine, 13, 15 because of heavy weapon. So it'll take five damage. It'll be at one. Uh, and I guess Dundrick will swing at it. And Dundrick will finish it off. He's just gonna move out. So we're gonna lose a couple inches going over the table. So we're gonna come to like right here. Monster phase, nothing really happens because that can't do anything to me. Uh, so we'll go with my friends. So we're going to double move to here. We almost get to that point of interest, but not quite. Uh, Desdemona. Going to move out towards those bookshelves. He's going to move up to this bookshelf, so let's check that one out. In the partially broken bookshelf. Um, oh, wait, never mind. I have to spend an action there. So I don't have... Um, oh, no, no, yeah, because I move up and I spend an action to open the cupboard. Yep. 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 And I will look at note 975, so if you, if you don't want to know about that, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. As Spoiler. I open it, there's this big of spores and gas and other gnarly stuff that come pouring out of this thing. Everything in it has been just grown over and overgrown with a poisonous fungus. So I have to make a life health check. Roll big. 12 plus, that's Samuel health, 11. It's a 23. Yes, I'm good. I'm safe. I am not poisoned and I gain 3 XP. Uh, jewels. You know what? Let me double check something. Okay. Uh, so, Jules is just going to double move to here. And Dog will double move to there. Take that with him. And then we'll go to an event phase. We're going to get a black seven. A Let's swirling go. darkness coalesces and a shadow knight materializes on a random board edge. So we got four board edges. We got a D8. One. So that's going to be the middle of that table edge. Okay, so shadow knights are pretty terrifying. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of backtracking here. Dundrick does have a magic weapon. We're going to start off with this guy. We're going to check out this point of interest. So we're going to move into contact with that cupboard. It's locked, so we're going to make this lock pick roll. Target number 10. I have no bonus, so we're just hoping for a good roll. Not quite. Desdemona's going to move, get her move on towards these cupboards over here. Uh, Jules. Going to start booking it towards those. Oh, I'm moving too many people. Hold on, hold on. That was my that was that was my two companions. Let me not cheat. 
So then Dundrick is gonna come There on the first one, and then I can go another four. He can move nine, so I want to come to like right here. Yeah, yeah, that seems legit. So we'll go monsters, which is just a shadow knight who's gonna move. Ooh, I was too close. It's okay. He's gonna move to here. I am not going to force combat with him. I'm not going to do that. So, um, once I move, he'll force with me. But right now, I'm choosing to not force with him because that way I can still take a shot at him. The rest of my companions are just going to... Well, he's going to chill out. Matchroom's going to move this way. He's going to come this way. So, seven and then another four. Four takes me to there. He's going to move down this way. Dog is going to move. And just kind of get himself ready to try to deal with that threat. He's going to move to here, pick up the treasure token. That's what he's going to do. Let me correct that. Let me move the disease token with the doggo. And then we'll go to an event phase. Red 5. We get a dark root vine in front of point of interest C, which is the table. So that'll bring us to the ranger phase of turn 6. Where's the six? There it is. Now we're going to start with Dundrick. I'm going to really hope that he just nuts this shot. I'm going to activate the bow here um, to give me another plus one. Let's see if I can hit him. Oh, bro. I mean, no. It was almost a really good roll. Uh, two plus five, eight. So that's not enough to do anything. Um, I guess... I can't re -roll. I already burned my reroll. So we're going to go ahead and move into contact. Move and attack. A big roll. Um, that's 22 to the Knights. 23. Is that correct? Oh, man. Oh man, <laughs> that's gonna hurt. Armor 13 is gonna deal 10 damage. Ooh, good lord. Okay, and so then, I, I mean, I have to do this at this point. Like, I don't have an option here, so I can hit it from there. So we're going to I'm gonna move. So we're gonna move to here and toss a heal on him to pick up five of that damage so he's not quite so badly hurt so then we'll go to monster phase where he will swing at sigval because sigval currently has the lower health there's a better swing from you sigval so that's a 22 against their 13 that'll win their armor 12 so 22 goes to 24 which would be 12 damage, which we cut in half, so 6, because Sigvald does not have a magic weapon. This dark root is closest to here, so it will move in and swing at Sigvald, who currently has the lowest health. Um, Sigvald will crush his face in. Now, there's no support here because it's even numbers, but I'm plus 5, so that's a 17 to their 11 over their armor. 10 with 6 health, that is a dead dark root. Vine, that's good. I didn't need that to stick around and give me trouble. That can't really do anything right now, so we will go to Companions. Desdemona will move over to this point of interest. Try to make this lockpick roll. I just need a 10 or higher. Nope, that's a nine. 
He's going to try to pick the lock again. Nope. That doesn't work. Matrim is going to move to this point of interest, which is E. It is an unlocked cupboard. I can spend an action to search it and see note 128. I have a lot of bones that come tumbling out of the cupboard as I open it. So I'm going to make a perception roll because I have a plus two modifier to this. That will successfully do the thing. So then I get to look at note 866. Samuel is going to double move to that cupboard to help pick that lock next time. The dog is going to stay put, not going to do anything. So we're going to go to an event card. Red three. Random hero has to make a will roll. Four is going to be Desdemona, who's plus three to her will, so a decent one to do it. 12 plus 3 is a 15. My target number was a 12, and I succeed, so I get to look at note 822. A blinding light, and I have a vision of the decanter of St. Amelia, and I would be healed to full health and cured of any disease or poison. However, Desdemona is at full health and does not have any disease or poison on her. So, we go to Ranger Phase, where I'm going to pick these things up. Yep, yep, yep. Pick them up. And... I, mean, I just gotta put bodies on it, I think. So, he's gonna come in. He's not gonna do anything. He's just gonna come in. And Dundrick is gonna take a swing. Okay, that's gonna hit for 16, 18, 22. Over there, armor... 12, so that's 10, and then half it because it's not a magic weapon. Light doesn't count as magic, so that'll be five damage. And Sigvald is going to take the swing. I just get in there, buddy. We need to deal three damage to him, Hoss. Oh, Sigvald, bro, you're killing me. Actually, I think you just killed yourself. Um, eight. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely, definitely. So that's 18 against armor. 13 because he's undead and I have the holy book. So, yeah, that's going to be five, five damage, which doesn't kill me, but it does leave me at one health. So a good, strong chance that I might die during this upcoming monster phase where that Shadow Knight will swing at Sigvald. Sigvald, just do it, buddy. Oh, you did it. My guy, that's my guy. So that's going to be 21, 25, 27. That's enough to do the three. So Shadow Knight is dead. Sigvald's almost dead, but not quite. Samuel's going to try to unlock that cupboard. He's got lock picking plus three. So nope, he can't do it either. Uh, Desdemona is going to try to pick the lock. Oh, all right, no, she's not. No, she's not. Matrim's just going to move over. Oh, wait, that one was opened. That one didn't have to be picked. Never mind. What am I saying? I'm right. That one was unlocked. This one is locked. So Matrim will move down and try to pick that lock. Target number 12. Oh my goodness. That was, however, a 13 plus his lock pick of 5. So yeah, that's, that's wide open now. So we're going to take a look at note 229. Amid the dusty jars and whatnots, tchotchkes of that cupboard, I find three XP and an herb pouch, which I give to Desdemona. Uh, Samuel, or no, Tobias is going to move. Yeah, Tobias is going to move out to here. He's going to take a shot at the big bush. Um, will hit, but will not get through its armor. He's going to stay put, and Desdemona will... Just move to here, I think. Turn seven event phase, where we get the black eight. Black eight, we get a wolf coming in on a random table edge, which I rolled a one. So that's where it came in. Same place as the Shadow Knight. Apparently there's a crack in the wall or something there that I haven't noticed. Okay, ranger phase of turn eight. We're gonna open with Dundrick, who's gonna take a shot at that wolf. 
getting a 12, which goes to a 17, which will hit. Wolf has an armor 10 and six health. We will peg that wolf to the wall. Thwip, dead, outstanding. Uh, Dundrick then gonna move here. Sigvald, man, I think he's just gonna move himself. He's gonna move back towards the door and just try to get up out of this room, back out to the courtyard before something real bad happens to him. And then we'll take S Tobias is gonna try to take a shot at the dark root vine. Miss. And then dark root vine doesn't do anything during the monster phase, really. So we'll, we'll come back to companions where we're gonna try to pick that lock. We do, we do pick the lock, because I have plus three. So we finally get into that last cup. That cupboard is filled with dried herbs. So we're gonna make a survival check, which is nothing for him, correct? Correct. Uh, and then we'll consult and see what we do. So we got a nine. So on a nine, which is six to 10, we take a look at note 781. Hey, we will go to Jules St. Augustine. Nobody else is going to do anything there. I don't think everybody's just going to stay put. There's no way. Like I'm not. I don't. I don't think I can deal. Like actually kill the dark root itself. So I think I may just ignore it. I've explored everything that I needed to explore. In the room. I'm probably going to miss out on some XP there. I'm sure. Maybe miss out on a note. I just don't know that it's got. It's got 18 health, and I've got a turn. Like I don't think I. And I can't. I can't shoot it down because it can. All the max damage it can take from shooting is two at a time. So our last event is the red four. I'm gonna make a roll for the doggo. 12, he makes a full recovery. Right now Dundrick has, is at 133 XP and he's got 17 XP without counting that one note that gave me the option of 20 or two progression points. So I'm gonna take the two progression points on that. Since 17 is enough to get me to a level um, I'm going to go ahead and use those two progression points towards helping somebody get further. For his heroic ability, we're going to take heroic, or for his new heroic ability, ability, we're going to take roll with the punch, which is if he loses a hand-to-hand -hand combat, he can use roll with the punch to have that damage round rounding him up. Sorry about that. All right. So everybody gets their plus two because nobody died. Tobias is going to take the extra plus the extra two progression points that I got because that puts him to 30 progression points, which gives him plus four to a skill up to a max of 10. If I've got a roll on the treasure table for what Jules is carrying, getting a two, which is going to be gold and jewels. And there also, I will take the one progression point for somebody. Now we've also got a roll from the herb pouch, I'm guessing is what that is. So we got a 10, which is another Anthelus. So the dog will come back up to half health, which because of his, however, because of his disease, he's gonna start at minus three health, which is just gonna kill the dog. So I will not have the dog going in, going forward. Sigvald is currently at one, so he will just heal up to half his remaining health, which would take him to seven. I'm then gonna use the healing potion that Matram is currently carrying. We're gonna give that over to Sigvald to pop him back up to a 12. And then we're gonna make some survival rolls to see if we can heal the rest of that up. So starting with Dundrick, two people can make a roll. Dundrick will heal, top him back also. Everybody's gonna, dog is gone. Everybody else will be going into the next scenario at full health. Thanks so much for tuning in, hanging out while we played the herbalism shop scenario for the Burning Light mission campaign. I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel go over there check out the link in the description check out the patreon there's a lot of cool stuff over there including access to our discord server talk to me hang out with me talk about our work what we got going on in the hobby um some shout outs all kinds of cool stuff check it out if that's something that you think you would be into and regardless of whether or not you do that i want you to know that i am incredibly grateful 
that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.